This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have four games in the NBA tonight, three of which could be elimination games, one of which is a series tied 2-2, which has been a lot of fun, a lot of injury news there. We're going to break down all four of those games with Brandon Gadula of Number Fire getting his read on those four NBA games and talking about the Mexico Open on the PGA Tour. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Number fire joined here as mentioned by brandon gadula check him out on twitter at gadula 13 find his work over at numberfire.com brandon four separate nba playoff games for tonight how you doing today uh good i was a little confused you said that the like the king's warriors series was good a lot of injuries like you rolled it together and i was like no i said i was like it's, like, it's, it's, a a, good... it's a good series, and there are a lot of injuries. Hopefully, those were separate enough. There's some intrigue it... around De'Aaron Fox. Is he doubtful? Is he not? Who can say? Not I. Yeah, it, it just it caught me by surprise a little bit, but I also have had uh, only one coffee today, so I need about seven more, and then I'll be then I'll be up. What's to your speed, baseline but... number for coffee? So the thing is, like, what is a cup of coffee to you? I mean, this is, is it, a cup of coffee to me. So like, this is my thermos. If you're watching YouTube, you can see the thermos. Yeah. So like, I have like what I think is probably like a double mug of like what's actual. Uh, okay. Like I think what's like that a design. Cup of coffee. It's just like some. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a something. I should have, as I weirdly lick my with my tongue out. Anyway, um, I have but a power about, rank about mug for that. I could have brought that out. I should have done that. Power rank what? The power rank. It's a power rank mug. A little coffee mug. Oh, oh I didn't well, I didn't hear what you said. I've got a power rank mug, me. a Northwestern mug, a Chicago L map mug, um, which will be very useful once we move there. So, like, you know, just didn't know if you had any fun uh fun mugs you wanted to share with along with your fun hats. Uh I I like to bust one out for Christmas. So look, my wife is very good with the design, so we have a lot of uh minimalistic i mean we don't have a whole lot like we're not a whole lot on the counters anything like that so our mugs tend to be just sort of of white with a little bit of pop got some ones with some wolves on them uh which is cool uh but i think my favorite one is when i bust out uh for christmas it just says this girl loves christmas it's a big (laughs) big green mug and i i do use it on the stream but you've never called attention to it that i know so okay i'm on the lookout i don't know why you can find that to just christmas that seems rude to the people again again it's festive and we're not going to leave that out near the on the coffee bar is it because you're worried about the cats causing mischief and destroying a beautiful mug no it's because it's green i'm gonna buy you a mug next time that i win the bobble hat or like head-to-head competition which might never happen again uh next time i win i will force you to buy yourself a mug a fun mug as opposed to you buy me a hat or bobblehead whichever way the the winds may be blowing we're a twin sack because the wolves got eliminated last night and i d- deeply deeply care about wolves basketball as you obviously know <laughs> gotta focus on the twins of their first series win against the yankees since i was 10 so you know we'll roll with that instead for today we're gonna dive into some potential elimination games for tonight get you ready for the nba and talk some pga toward the mexico open john rom tony finau in that field and pretty much nobody else we'll talk about all that later on but first First, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread, wherever you get your podcasts or NFL Draft prop betting preview with Dr. Ed Fang went up yesterday afternoon, breaking down Ed's favorite bets for this year's draft, talking about the Will Levis Reddit weird stuff, all that in the same feed uh, here on Covering the Spread and up on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, hit the thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, Also subscribe to the FanDuel YouTube page or give us a five-star rating over on Apple. The NBA playoffs are here and you can get in on the action right from first tip with FanDuel. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. 
That's right. Just place a three plus leg same game parlay or same game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game. And you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no sweat same game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and president select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or the fanduel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800 327. 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts. In New York, 1 8778 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y. In New York or Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in now to the first game in the NBA for tonight, Brandon. That is the Knicks at the Cavaliers. The Knicks have a chance to close this one out, but the Cavaliers are five and a half point home favorites. Total is 202 and a half. When you look at this game, what stands out to you from a betting perspective? Yeah, super slow series. Um, 90.1 possessions per game for these teams. Under 100 points per game for each side on average. Uh, no more than 107 points scored. By a single team in this series, uh, only the the Nets and 76ers were playing at a slower pace, um, and Cleveland, you know, down three to one despite having a better effective field goal percentage uh, than the Knicks. Um, both are pretty low, quite low, um, but that's an important number, and it is a little bit uh, interesting to see the gap there of like three percentage points in favor of Cleveland, despite uh, their status as uh, trailing in the series. The Knicks are just doing a really good job on the offensive glass. You know, Cavs doing a pretty solid job themselves, but uh, Knicks even better there. And that's kind of been one of the differences and turnover rate for, for Cleveland a little bit higher uh, than you'd like to see um, as well for most of these games. But my, you know, if you look at like the underlying data, use the four factors to kind of figure out like what expected scores should be. The series has been a little bit closer uh, than the actual point totals have been. New York averaging a four-point uh, point differential, but should be about 1.3, so still favors um, the Knicks. Again, pace is bad here. We we know that. Scoring's low. Shooting's been bad, but if we're being honest here, um, we're kind. Of, I don't want to say we're due for an over, but the shooting and the slow pace has really brought down the total at 202.5 to such a point that the over is very much in play. We're looking at sort of outlierishly low shooting. So anything a little bit more substantial than that, the Cavs really got to be uh, locked in. We tend to see some some better performances from you know the role players uh, at home. I think that they'll get some scoring help here. Uh, I do have the spread at 6.2 in favor of the Cavs. So I would be fine with that, but I kind of prefer the over, even though this, this series has felt like a blast from the past. Uh, like the early, you know, 2000, pick, pick your favorite low scoring era, uh, whatever it is. But um, yeah, I, I kind of think that the over makes a lot of sense. And if you're into it, uh, I would say Cavs, uh, you know, minus five and a half, but I would probably rather just take the money line at that rate. Cause I think it's a pretty close uh, number compared to what my model says. Yeah, the total in this game, as you mentioned, is at 202 and a half. The over is minus 110. Now, you use the word do, and I think that that can be a word that is often misused a lot of times where you're kind of talking about regression. That's what you're talking about. Um, You'll see the word do used in situations where maybe a team hasn't done something for a while, but it's for legitimate reasons. Here, you're just talking about regression. And so I like when I hear the word do my ears like vomit. Um, yeah. But like, I think in the way that you're using, it, you're talking about regression in terms of shots falling because like, they're not as bad offensively as they played so far in the series. Correct. These two teams. 
Yeah, and I mean, like they're they're generally like solid defensive teams, if not you know really good defensive teams. But mm -hmm. uh, the Cavaliers right now leading the playoffs in the bad sense in turnover rate. Um, don't love that. If that gets scaled back, if the shooting gets a little bit better, because we're already lingering close to enough points here where we're going to get an over. Um, so at a certain point, teams just aren't going to shoot as bad every single game. So I think with a little bit of uh, a little bit better, um, you know, ball control, not turning the yeah. ball over so much for Cleveland, not shooting at complete like bottom of the playoffs for both teams. Basically that's all we're looking at. I'm not saying this game is going to be, scoring 240 and, and be, you know, 75, 75 at halftime, anything like that. But uh, this is, it makes a lot of sense mathematically. And it does feel, you know, in my notes, I say it's going to be tough to kind of root for the over here. But um, I think that makes, makes the most sense uh, for this game. Alternate point total over uh, highest we can go is 228 and a half. <laughs> Sorry. I was looking yeah. for your 240. Couldn't quite get there. Yeah, I think we'll need about seven shot. overtimes for that. But no, I think it really know. comes down to like, just having shooting that that is not complete, completely terrible, basically. Yeah. Okay. So Brandon does like the over there, two hundred two and a half. Maybe not the alt over two forty, but hey, you know we can <laughs> we can dream at least. Second game for tonight is the Lakers at the Grizzlies. Lakers took a three to one series lead on Monday night, but they're now four point underdogs on the road against the Grizzlies. Total here is two twenty one and a half. Brandon, looking at this game for game number five, who do you see coming out on top? Uh, coming out on top, because um, I'm focused on the total here for this. Okay, one well, what do you see with the total? Well, I just wasn't prepared. <laughs> I, I I was prepared to roll into to to so uh, to my overview. So I actually have um, the Grizzlies. The thing is, the spread I have it at four exactly. So okay, perfect. throw that right out. Um, not Love interested it. there. Love uh, a good efficient line. I do think I do think that the Grizzlies. Uh, I just want to make sure uh, that I was a consistent with like what my number said here but yeah i do think that the, that the grizzlies will get this one um but i think there's a lot of interesting uh notes for this game uh the lakers are holding the grizzlies to a 47.7 effective field goal percentage uh they're at uh, the lakers are at 51.5 percent from the south so again toward the low end um other than that it's pretty even uh in terms of the four factors and for that reason, it's it's very likely that the the Lakers have somewhat underperformed in the series, and they've been extremely good uh, with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and D'Angelo Russell all playing together. Eleven and two outright, um, nine and four against the spread. So, might wonder like why I'm thinking uh, the Grizzlies here. It's just kind of what the data says, and frankly, uh, game fives are historically good to the home team. Um, you know, without looking at context of whether they're closeout games or uh, the complete opposite here. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a situation where we're going to, again, we're not due for Desmond Bain to shoot better, but he's, he's under 30% from three on I think like 35 attempts. He's a really good shooter. I think that uh, ticks up. This is a situation where the Grizzlies probably going to come out, come out strong. Um, but for me, what stands out most is actually that total. And I think it's the under uh, for this game, uh, averaging just 219 points per game. And based on the four factors, should be at like two fifteen point six per game. Uh, the actual numbers based on like okay, this is how good the Lakers have been with LeBron, uh, AD, and D'Angelo Russell. Factor that in uh, to you know the, the the Grizzlies' current health. Even that says that we should lean toward the under. So uh, I'm not really interested in, in who wins. I I'm kind of on board with the Lakers kind of having this revival, but. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think the right play here, or my favorite play, I should say at least, is uh, is the under. So efficient spread at the Grizzlies minus four, but Brandon does like the under two twenty one and a half minus one ten. The number right that on that right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Third game for tonight is the Heat at the Bucks. Of course, we got Jimmy Butler back in Wisconsin, which is kind of fun, and he went bananas a couple nights ago to help the Heat overcome a massive deficit win that game outright and now they're up three to one but the spread here is 11 and a half in favor of the bucks the total is 220 and a half so brandon my question for you is can jimmy do it again or are the bucks in line to cover a really big spread here yeah it's always tough with these playoff games because 
you, you know, they're both, they're both playoff teams. Uh, pace tends to be a little bit slower. You feel like, you know, each team has the ability to, you know, punch and counter punch and to cover a big spread um, is, is tough, but also it's not that uncommon to see these games that turn into blowouts. And, mm-hmm. and right now uh, this could be one where, you know, Milwaukee gets ahead and Miami just kind of th- throws in the towel and says, well, we'll see you next game. That's always tough, especially coming on. And, you know, there's reasons to think that based on, like you said, this basically being the Jimmy Butler series right now. Uh, he looked completely, well, first of all, phenomenal, but he looked, you know, pretty worn out uh, by the end of that game. It reminded me a bit of like classic LeBron uh, with like the the terrible calves where, yeah, they're they're doing stuff. But if, if LeBron wasn't doing what he was doing, this would be pretty abysmal. Uh, believe it or not, this has actually been the best uh, shooting series by effective field goal percentage combined uh, sure. in the playoffs. Not really what you maybe think um, between these two, but uh, in, in games with Giannis, uh, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton, Milwaukee's nineteen and eight, uh, just twelve and 15, 12 and fifteen against the spread. But uh, again, if you inject the current rotation data, uh, account for the Heat uh, not having Tyler Hero, that kind of stuff. You know, 11 and a half points is a lot. It was 11. Um, I actually have this one at 13 and a half in favor of the Bucks. I kind of do fear the deer. I think they'll get, come out, come out swinging, uh, get, get out ahead. Uh, Giannis presumably a bit healthier than he was even last game. Uh, considering that home court advantage and all that kind of stuff. I, I kind of do think that they cover because if, if Miami doesn't get any help and Jimmy Butler can't do it again, that that last game would have been kind of tough. And you can remind me or correct me if this is incorrect, but thinking back to that LeBron analogy, back in the day with the Cavs, they were willing to kind of shut things down if it was not a close score because of how hard he would go in the close games. Am I misremembering that? But it does seem like like if the score got out of hand, they'd be like, okay, let's let's look forward to game six, stuff like that. Cause I feel like that's the way I remember those those teams. Brother, I don't even remember what happened yesterday, but it does sound familiar. As the world's most foremost NBA expert, I feel like I would know. You yeah, know, you yeah. clearly. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm always giving my own picks here on on the NBA side of things, as always. But yeah, eleven and a half, and I'm assuming the thirteen point spread that you have does not account for the possibility of like they shut things down if it gets to be too wide of a gap. Correct. Yeah, I don't really account for that, but right. I would I don't think anyone would be surprised if both the Heat pushed the, the Bucks to the brink. Mm-hmm. But also I don't think we'd be surprised if we're looking at like a 62-38 situation at halftime right. and uh it just doesn't really get much better than that. So it, it's th- we talk about this with like when we talk football and talk about like which games are going to be high scoring or low scoring and we make the jokes of like I just see that I see the overlay coming up halftime three nothing like this game's gonna like I can just envision it between two. I mean three nothing in this game would be sick. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, you know I see. I just kind of envision like that graphic with uh, yeah. kind of a an eighteen points uh, gap like in the third quarter. Right, but if Jimmy, Jimmy brings it, then then he brings it. And Miami wins by ten. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yep. Okay, so Brandon does like the Bucks minus 11 and a half. That is minus 114 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Final game of the night is the Warriors and the Kings. That spread right now is one and a half in favor of the Warriors. Total is 234 and a half. That has ticked down a half point here in the past half an hour or so. And De'Aaron Fox was doubtful, but now has said he plans to play in this game. So Brandon, I know you love injury ambiguity. So what's your read on this game, Kings and Warriors? Yeah, this one's actually the toughest night of the, of the night for me, not just for the, the injury situation, but uh, just a, a series itself that that's tricky. The the Warriors, we know their road struggles, but that's kind of explainable to a degree by like three point shooting against them, which is not specifically in their control, that kind of stuff. So it's been a really weird split. Uh, the Kings are like they're good, but you would also think for them to that they would be able to take advantage of a Warriors team without Draymond Green. So it's kind of hard for me to get a feel uh, for, for these teams, you know, the Warriors at times been without, you know, Andrew Wiggins. It's just, it's a, it's a weird situation. And now we throw in the, the finger injury to De'Aaron Fox. Now 
in games with DeMontis Sabonis, but Fox off the floor, which doesn't even specifically mean that Sabonis was on the floor for all of these possessions, just that he played in the game and Fox was not on the court. Sacramento has been about as good um, as they were with Fox. I mean, a little bit less, uh, less strong, but the, the question is like, is it, and, you know, I don't, I don't know what the, the, the situation is. I don't know how effective he'll be, but right. you ask like, well, they're going to actually be worse if he's trying to play through, uh, you know, a finger injury on his shooting hand, like, and that make that skews things. So uh, it, it's a, it's kind of a tricky one. And the series itself has been pretty tight overall in terms of the four factors um, kind of pretty average overall that the, the kind of outlier here is just that Sacramento hasn't shot super well, but you know, up-tempo game for me, once I account for everything, my model has this one as, essentially as like a pick them. Mm-hmm. So at that rate, I'm good taking the one and a half points uh, for the home side here. That's, I think that the right play, not overreacting to the injury, the way that I think this one comes back to get me is if, if Fox is just completely ineffective and that, would you know then show that you know with fox on the floor not 100 percent like dealing with this injury that they're kind of a bad team so like that's kind of the main fear here but i do think that taking the points uh is the right play that spread is one and a half right now total or uh one and a half the uh number on that is minus 110 on the one and a half the money line for the kings plus 102 if you have that as a toss-up i think it does make sense to go with the points here go with the plus one and a half one and a half at minus 110 i think that is the preferred way to bet this one uh so the numbers brandon likes for tonight Knicks and Cavs over 202 and a half lakers grizzlies under 221 and a half bucks minus 11 and a half and the kings plus one and a half at minus 110 Let's talk now about the PGA Tour for this week. Not the biggest event, but if we have Brandon here, I might as well ask him about this event. And it's also kind of fun as a thought experiment because there are only two like top end golfers in this field. John Rahm is plus 260, Tony Finau plus 850, nobody else shorter than 19 to 1. So let's start things off with Rahm and Finau, Brandon. Any value on those two guys given how much it drops off after them despite short numbers here? So based on what I presume are specifically the the reactions to where the bets are coming in. Um, like you would think that all the value is that, that these guys are just overvalued and that the value is on uh, everyone else because mm-hmm. these odds are so short, but frankly, it's kind of the opposite. Um, my model has ROM at like plus two fifty, which is wild. Uh, so he's actually like, if you, if you're cool with a plus two sixty return, I know Jim says value is value. If you're if yeah. you're cool with that uh, to win a full field event, like sure, Rom won here last year. By the way, uh, we're not going to get like too much into the specifics of the course, but uh, from what we learned last year for uh, Vidanta Vallarta is distance helps, sort of a uh, easy place to get up and down. So Rom fits. Uh, he. Showed, he showed up well at the Heritage after winning the Masters, so he clearly is not just like phoning it in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for Tony Fino, my model has him at, at plus seven hundred. So, oh wow, uh, some value there as well. Yeah, he's the better value, which I'm more okay with uh, than someone who's around like the the plus two sixty mark. But yeah, these two guys are actual values according to my model. Now, part of that is that they're really good putters too, and so they are going to perform well long-term in terms of just actual stroke gain total numbers. Um, but yeah, like I'm fine with both of them. And I would also throw your boy Wyndham Clark into the mix at 19 to one as like a fair value. And what we're seeing is what feels like th- two or three names that are completely overvalued and everyone seems to be betting everyone else and that doesn't mm-hmm. seem like the right play mathematically yeah. tony fino is a great value and rom and Wyndham clark are pretty solid values themselves so it sounds like the one you actually would be okay betting is fino plus 850 is that correct yes okay uh, well i mean I... i'm not gonna talk anyone out of clark or rom and yeah like that's just the reality of that but if like, i'm picking one it's fino by but easily if if with me 
with I put a lot of trust in your numbers. Um, if I look at your numbers and see that Rom is a value plus two sixty, I'm taking it because, like you said, <laughs> value is value. But having Finau's fair market at it was twelve point five percent to win, um, and his implied odds of plus eight fifty are longer, or uh, like ten and a half percent. I'm trying to you know get this down um, before I pull up the calculator, but uh, plus eight fifty implied odds ten point five percent. Nailed it first time. Um, if I can get two percentage points of value, that's also a good one. So uh, fee now does seem like a good bet there, but Rom of value Clark, like fair. I think that that makes a lot of sense. Would you take Rom and fee now, or is that too much exposure to a market where only one guy can win for you? Uh, I, I, I'm fine with it. I think for me to feel good, like justified betting John Rom, it's going to be like a multi-unit bet. Yeah. And that's just kind of how I view it. Um, so I don't, I don't mind it. I'm yeah. more likely to go with uh, Finau, potentially Clark. And then uh, there's two names at 65 to one who are uh, interesting uh, for potentially even like partial units, just because there's so much win equity between Finau and Rom, basically 40%. But our guy, Luke List, at 65 to one uh, and Alex Smalley at 65 to one as well. I think those are, uh, probably the two most interesting quote unquote long shots. Uh, again, if the course plays like it did last year, distance and T to green game is going to be beneficial. And these guys have that. The putting is not always there for them. And that's you sure about that. <laughs> partially why I'm, a bold statement with Luke list. <laughs> partially why they're 65 to one in a yeah. field like this. But again, you know, it's a, it's a good course fit. And if the putting is somewhat reasonable here, mm-hmm we could see them uh, fare well. And of course I'm always fine taking, taking my long shots with top tens as well, just yeah. to sort of protect myself to some degree. Yeah. I think thinking about it from my perspective, I would be okay doing Fino and Rom because like, if you give me a NASCAR group, bet, which is very different, but you give me a NASCAR group bet with six drivers in it and I show value on the guy at, at plus 260 and a guy at plus 850, I would be okay taking both, even though I know only one guy can win that market it's not my preferred way to do things i tend to be very limited with outrights and stuff like that as a result because i don't want to have a lot of dead bets that are automatically dead but i think i'd be okay with that but the considerations for brandon outside of rom and clark uh are luke list and alex smalley 65 to 1 and then uh tony fina the firm bet there at plus 850 any other markets catching your attention here for the mexico open uh joseph bram that's a top 10 plus 410 uh, can pick up some distance for for him off the tee. Wedge game's pretty good. Uh, I think that that's a that's a good enough combo this week to be in contention and get you know it, it's it's not really like a scrambling kind of contest, um, but being able to get up and down uh, or put it close from within thirty is never a bad thing. So I, I like that for for Bramlett. Another top ten. Uh, Lee Hodges is plus five hundred. Was T six at Valero, uh, the Texas Open. Top 20 at the Honda and the Genesis since mid-February as well. This is a much, much, much easier field. Uh, much easier than, than it was even last year. So I think the path to upside is there. And then uh, probably the first matchup bet I've ever given on oh. on this show because I don't, I just don't do a whole lot of matchups. But uh, our guy, Wyndham Clark, minus 134 over Gary Woodland. Very similar ball strikers right now uh, over the past 50 rounds. Woodland, the better driver, but the short game, much, much better uh, for Wyndham Clark in that sample. So I feel pretty good with that one. And uh, I'm trying to get better at acknowledging matchup bets, but uh, it's something that, I'm, that I'm, something that I'm still working on. Isn't that a, a wrestling thing? Acknowledge me. Is that a thing? Uh, Jim. I'm slowly trying to, to pick it up. I'm slowly Thank working you, Jim. on it. Who is that? Who is it? Yeah, who is the acknowledge me person? It's Roman Reigns, our tribal chief. Okay, Wyndham Reigns. Um, <clears throat> acknowledge Wyndham Clark. I think that's the takeaway here. So the ones Brandon mentioned there, uh, Wyndham Clark over Gary Woodland, minus 134. Lee Hodges, top 10, 5 to 1. And Joseph Bramlett, top 10 at plus 410. That's all we got here for today. But I want to thank you once again, Brandon, for swinging by, breaking down your thoughts on NBA and the PGA. Good luck to you with your bets across the NBA for tonight. Have fun watching those games. Enjoy the Mexico Open. And we'll talk to you once again soon.
thank you for having me on. Always, uh, always fun to talk about the process of why it is that I like the stuff that I like. And that's all we can control, baby. Trust the process. Trust Wyndham Clark. Those are the only two tenants of sports betting, in my opinion. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Cadula13. I am on Twitter at Jim Sanes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. We are back once again tomorrow to talk some more betting. Looking forward to it. We'll get some NASCAR, some Formula One in there. We'll talk to you all then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.